Kate Spar from Meeple PhD with another Cosmic Game Connection. And given that it's October and a time of pumpkin spice and jack-o'-lanterns, I found a finding a couple years old that uh, would maybe give us a little bit to celebrate this season. So a few years ago, astronomers using NASA's Kepler and Swift satellite, coupled with ground-based observations, found a batch of stars that are spinning so fast that they have been squashed into a pumpkin-like shape. NASA's Kepler, during its prime mission, stared at the same patch of sky for about four years straight. It was looking at about 150,000 stars, watching for um, telltale signs of planets orbiting in front of those stars, causing the starlight to dip just a little bit. But what this means for astronomers who maybe don't care as much about exoplanets is that there is this treasure trove of 150,000 stars for which there's four years of data. That's a lot of data. So a group of astronomers asked for some time on the SWIFT satellite to follow up on parts of the Kepler field of view, looking for stars for which SWIFT would detect X-rays uh, from the same location that Kepler saw starlight. And what they found were about 93 sources that matched up. About half of those were actually active galactic nuclei. Super interesting objects, but not what the scientists were looking for. The other half were stars. And so they followed up with ground-based observations of the brightest of those. 18 of those happened to be these super bright, super fast spinning stars that had a lot of X-ray activity. And what they think is going on here is that a long time ago, these stars were actually two stars orbiting each other so close that eventually they merged. And when they merged, it caused the, um, that rotation rate to just speed up um, so that they are really rapidly rotating. Um, it also caused a lot of activity on the, the surface of them so that they're really bright in x-rays. For comparison, the most extreme one they found is about 10 times the mass of our sun, but it rotates in just five days. Our sun takes, well, it's actually between 25 and 30 days to rotate, depending on which part of the sun you're looking at, but let's say it's about 28 days. So compare that to a star 10 times the sun's mass, rotating every five days. That's really fast for an object that big. And what happens when something that big is rotating that fast is the, the poles kind of squash in a bit, and that's where you get your pumpkin shape, which is perfect for this Halloween season. So when I thought about these rapidly spinning pumpkin-shaped stars, the game that came to mind was the Quacks of Quedlinburg. Quacks is a pool building and press your luck game where players take on the role of quacks uh, building up their potions over a nine-day festival in order to sell them to the people or suckers of the town. So the game is set up with the score track in the center of the table, the round marker set on round one. Players each get a cauldron board, a droplet, and a rat stone. They get, oh, and a flask. They also get a starting set of ingredients and a bag to put it in. Each round starts by reading a fortune card. Then players determine if there are any rat stones that need to be given to anyone. This is basically a catch-up mechanism. Then players start building out their potions by pulling ingredients from their bag and placing them into their pots. So players build their potions until either they choose to stop or they are forced to stop. And this could happen uh, if they explode their pot, which happens when the value on their white chips exceeds seven. Once everyone is done with their potions, you then go through a set set of steps that's indicated on the score track. You determine who got the furthest in their potion and they get to roll a special die for a bonus. 
You look at some of the special ingredients and see if they have triggered. You look to see what is on the next bubble after your last played ingredient. If there's a ruby there, you get to collect a ruby. Everyone gets points that are marked on, on that, unless they exploded. I'll talk about that in a second. And then you also get to buy new chips to put into your bag. After that, players get to spend rubies if they have them to either flip their flask over or to move their droplet so that they get to start their potion a little bit ahead of where they were last time. So if you exploded, you don't get to get on that die roll. You're disqualified from it and you either get points or get to buy new chips for your bag, not both. So you do this over nine rounds and then you total up your points and whoever has the most points fleeced the most money out of those townspeople over the nine day festival. Now where the game really sings is in those ingredients and their variable abilities. The, the base game comes with four different sets of book cards for each ingredient. Some of them allow you to preview things before you put them into your pot. Others chain with other ingredients and let you move further if you, know, if you have certain ingredients in your, in your pot or to remove certain ingredients from your pot uh, to hopefully keep you from exploding as quickly. Some, like the pumpkins, maybe don't do as much on their own, but they can be chained together with some of the other abilities. And in some games, they become hugely important. So, it's those pumpkins, of course, that made me think about these rapidly spinning stars that have gotten squooshed into a pumpkin shape. So the next time you find yourself pulling a pumpkin out of your bag and maybe whining a little that it isn't a different ingredient, <laughs> take just a second and appreciate the pumpkin and the pumpkin-like stars that these astronomers found a few years ago. Thanks for joining me. I'll be back again with another Cosmic Game Connection soon. If you have any questions about the game or the science that I talked about, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Otherwise, uh, you can find me on Instagram and Twitter as at MeeplePhD, and you can follow my blog at MeeplePhD.com. just the kiss of death to say that out loud, wasn't it? <laughs>